I'm Bill Waters here with uh, Simon Kinsberg with regards to the new uh, great new science fiction film Elysium coming out next year. So uh, quite the excitement going on in there around the around the booth this weekend and everything, um, seeing people get up there and everything. So what's it been like, you know, kind of on the on the ramp up towards next year and getting ready for the spring? Well, um, you know, we're so focused on making the movie and completing the movie. We're still so you know we're still a ways away. Mm -hmm. um, we're very much mid process in the editing. Uh, what people are going to see today is a lot of um, rough visual effects and some pre mm -hmm. and essentially cartoons. So right. um, it's just been, you know, um, night and day trying to trying to complete the movie. Uh, and, it's a, and it's a special one. Like, I, I've worked in a lot of movies, and there's some I like and some I love and some I don't like. Um, and this is one, like, I really adore. And this is one that I'm so profoundly proud of, um, largely because of Neil, because Neil Blomkamp just has a vision that I think we did a pretty good job of rendering on screen. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, we were very excited about Comic-Con. It was the place where he launched and they sort of introduced District 9 to the world. So it was important to all of us to launch Elysium here. Right. Um, but uh, but really, the you know, Neil was editing yesterday in Vancouver right. uh, and flew flew in last night. So it's an ongoing process. Very cool. The, you know, reading up about it, it almost sounds a little bit like the District 9 approach in that, you know, kind of an independent... Um, you guys have an, had an idea. We're coming together with it, and then went about to the um, to the studios and said, "Hey, do you any of you kids want to get on board? Because we have got something cool." Mm -hmm. Do you think that's kind of like you know the new way of doing things these I hope days, it's or a new one way of doing things? Like it was an amazing process because we had an, you know a, a level of freedom um, creatively that I've never had on a movie before, especially a movie of this scope and mm -hmm. budget. Um, so I, you know I'm hopeful and optimistic this movie is going to be successful, and so it may actually change the way people think about movies of this size. I mean, obviously, independent movies are still thriving, but they're right. usually not this kind of budget and this kind of scope. So it was very fun. It was fun to make it this way. Do you, uh, do you find it giving more freedom, and, you know, having switched from over on the, on the writing side, going over to the production side, um, it, do you still feel that, you know, wanting to get in there and work, you know, work on the script and the script drafting, or, you know, do you like the production side, that vision, you know, high level? It depends. It really depends from movie to movie. In truth, like, Neil's such a good writer, and he's such a visionary in terms of understanding and seeing the whole world and seeing the whole movie that I had no impulse to want to write. Um, right. There are plenty of movies that I've produced and I end up rewriting mm -hmm. or I end up working sort of more closely with the writers um, on, this wasn't one, this was one where like I gave ideas like a producer creatively and, mm -hmm. and he used me as a sounding board, but um, he's he just has the whole movie in his head in a way that I've never seen before. Cool. Uh, it, you know, in looking, you know, in the small snippets that I've seen and what's going on that are being talked about there at the booth, it sounds very much like, you know, the class struggle, but, you know, the the, the relevance. Do you do you like working with either... Um, oh, uh, sorry, I'm just shit. watching. I just no, want to no, see no. how he's doing. No, 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 he can no. I didn't do this questions. to you. I didn't do this to you. That's not <laughs> fair. Once you said it, then you're doing, you're doing, <laughs> continue. Don't let me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you find, you know, using whether it be, you know, like X-Men and the, you know, the superhero genre or the fantastical genre would be sci-fi um, otherwise to address you know, yeah. contemporary issues. Is that really the way to get to audiences these days? I think it's... I, I, I don't, I, you know, there's tons of different kinds of movies that get to audiences. So, but I think when you have a movie that is a cool genre film, so it's got action, it's got explosions, and it's got you know, fantastical realms mm -hmm. and, and cool gack, um, and you couple that with something that's meaningful and relevant for people. I think that's the best of all worlds. I think part of the success of Avatar was that there was something socially, politically in the mm. film that people responded to with a whole bunch of visuals that were rad. Right. And so I think, you know, Neil's aesthetic, and I, it's, it, it manifests in the visuals as much as it does the, the script, his aesthetic is relevant. It's political. It's about the real world. So it's not just about people in the space station. It happens to be about class and immigration and, and, uh, and health care and things that are woven into the film in hopefully like a kind of submerged, subtle way. Hey, man, how you doing, right? <laughs> no, uh, so uh, how, how's the fan reaction been here at Comic-Con for you guys? Well, we just, I just got it. All of us okay. just got it okay. last night. So, and we've just been doing interviews today. So, um, but it seems like, because I read online and I go to all the blogs and sites, um, it seems like people are responding well to the stuff that we've showed. I mean, just the spaceships and, um, and the booth we have here. And today is the big test. You know, this afternoon is uh, showing a, a chunk of footage of the movie. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you like having that loop, uh, loop back effect with regards to, you know, the fan base and everything like that? I do. I enjoy it. I mean, you know, I've been on every side of it in the sense of people are excited about this movie and seem positive about it. I think they're going to be even more positive after today. Mm. I've been in movies that they weren't positive about going in right. and they were surprised. I've been in movies they were negative about and they were right to be negative right. about. So 
I, I'm, I am myself a fan, mm -hmm. and like I go online and check stuff about other movies that I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. So um, I just enjoy being part of that dialogue, and I actually think it can be useful. Like mm -hmm. even as we're developing like an X Men sequel, I'm uh, I'm aware of what the fans liked about First Class. I'm right. aware of what they're hoping to see in the sequel. So it's some stuff we factor in. I mean, it's it's you know truly is you know you know X Men First Class. I mean, there's very definitely you know. With that movie, you revitalized hope in fans <laughs> with regards to that. You know, had a number of friends that basically always, you know, friends had other friends that went to see it for opening night, and then the friends went, "What? You mean it, it's a good one?" Yeah. And people went and said, "Like, we really enjoyed this." And so it's kind of like it's it's you can you know when put in the right hands and cast in a certain way, it's it's amazing what you can get out of things. Right. And even even when a fan base has become jaded, yeah. they'll still like, "Hey, we can buy into this." And I think you know a sci-fi movie, especially one that's got a good story to tell and a great cast, um, people are so looking much forward of it to. is cast. Like I mean, honestly, like I, I thank you very much. We were very proud. I'm very proud of First Class, and we were very aware that it was. Um, it was a brand that we wanted to return to its roots. Like X One and Two are movies that are like really high quality, elegant, sophisticated, great performance movies. And so it was really important to us to get a filmmaker that could do that, and also to get a cast. Right. That I mean, you're talking about Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen, like right. who in their 30s or 20s right. can do that. And so luckily, we found two guys that could. Right. And you're you, doing that. It's always a challenge. You know, having a younger version, older version of you know, a character in a movie. But yeah. for them, everyone you know took to it very well. And, uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad, and I, I think it's because they're such good actors, and because Matthew is a very, very good director, and he's mm. very good with actors. Yeah. He's good with performance. And we're looking forward to seeing what comes out with Elysium uh, next uh, March. March 1st, yeah. Great. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Yeah. Yeah.